people have been up to. So over the weekend, I went to um, Inner Visions Lost in the Moment UK. Now, if you're wondering what that is, Inner Visions is a record label collective of DJs that I'm a real big fan of, headed up by sorry, headed up by Dixon with a bunch of other artists on there too that you might have heard of, such as Tricks, um, <laughs> um, Jimmy Jules, and a few other people. And they usually play a lot of kind of what you would term or what I would deem to be like melodic house, which I hate the kind of name because I think it's really G-A-Y. But essentially they play loads of like great house music, deep house, you know, regular house music, whatever it may be called. And um, they just have a really cool aesthetic about them. They seem to take DJing very, very seriously. They've kind of crossed over in a somewhat commercial side with the collaborations with GTA They've also done a lot of stuff in Ibiza recently, some stuff in Miami, and they've kind of done it in a very tasteful way, but they're clearly trying to expand the sort of like Indivision sound and the taste level and whatever it may be to parts worldwide, isn't it? And because the genre of house music they play, I feel like is a lot more, how would you call it? is a lot more accessible. Like you could play that sort of stuff in the background of a H&M. You could play in like a, you know an underground party somewhere you could play in a hotel lounge somewhere in the middle of la at the standard or something and no one's gonna really gonna bat an eyelid it's not really gonna force people to leave or make people go to the reception and say can you turn that off you know kind of not simply which is the opposite of what happens to kind of stuff like hardcore that everyone's a big fan of the kind of music that you might hear at like a possession so the kind of music i feel like it sort of has a wide it has an opportunity to kind of touch a lot more people than other maybe genres would have right so that's really good about that and they got this party series that they also do called lost in the moment and from what i understood from reading loads of interviews and listening to dixon talk about it the whole idea behind it was to kind of put on these amazing parties in these really far-flung places or maybe quote-unquote unconventional places and to essentially have a party where people would quote-unquote get lost in the moment they'd be ingratiated or sort of like absorbed within their environment and they'd sort of sort of kind of like surround surrender themselves to their surroundings right and allow the djs to sort of like guide them on this journey around right? this kind of spiritual soundscape you know journey thing you know with house music playing in the background and people off their face on ket and 2cb and whatnot so that was basically the premise around it but um over the years maybe it's sort of like changed a little bit in terms of like how strict they are with how where they put them and the interesting places they do because they've done them in places like israel and whatnot and you know just cool looking places around europe and whatnot but i feel like nowadays they've maybe just turned it into a quasi party series that they can do in different places and pop up because they did one in paris and obviously did one here in the uk where i went to which was in kind of bedford area which was like what an hour and a half outside of london and it was a really decent event um the tickets were very well priced i think considering the level of talent that was available to go and see i think it was uh, priced around 50 pounds or something 50 to 80 pounds i think the tickets and essentially you got to see the entire um inner visions roster maybe with the exception of a couple people and also the, with the inclusion of someone like a Gerd Jansen who I'm a big fan of, DJ Holographic who I've also been kind of raving about for a long time who for whatever reason has been really welcomed with open arms by that crew. I'm not sure sure why but I do like it. Like they, they kind of pluck this kind of girl who I'm pretty sure is from Detroit out of quote unquote nowhere and sort of like brought her into that kind of world. It's really, really cool because I'm sure that's those kind of looks have really contributed and helped her kind of get loads of gigs and bookings and stuff so that's really cool to see. And then a few other people too were included by she was an innovation sort of showcase but it does feel like they've kind of relaxed their parameters around it because essentially this lost the moment was in bedford it wasn't in the most kind of um unique place because we've been there prior for another innovation event um or another kind of innovation type style event which is a labyrinth open air where they book a lot of innovation people to play too and they did that at the same place which is a place called toft manor which is essentially like a an amazing country mansion i don't know sort of like place right make big feels an amazing house and essentially i guess the person who owns it or whoever it may be has allowed it to kind of be used by promoters and party people to put on events and to kind of create this kind of one-off kind of experience for people um especially nowadays that most clubbing events are kind of all the same so that's fairly decent and then of course those transports that they kind of organized from the bed lo local bedford station all the way to a train station that was pretty decent all of it was really done well and i think having gone to a few labyrinth events myself who are the people that put on lost in a moment i think in collaboration with Indivision, i'm pretty sure it was a collab sort of thing i think so anyway um i have to say it was very very well done 
I'm sure maybe on their side, they probably would have liked to have sold more tickets because they did feel like they didn't sell enough or they didn't sell as much as they probably would have hoped considering the, 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 the amount of people that were there. It wasn't exactly like full as maybe other events have been. And obviously seeing them send out loads of emails about tickets that he's selling out because, you know, I've been a promoter myself, so I know what the game is. And I know that whole kind of, you know, game that you do in terms of like telling people that stuff is sold out and we're close to selling out when it hasn't really because if it did you wouldn't be sending people reminders because you'd be too busy selling um but in general in a post-pandemic world where people have sort of like changed their where people have changed their priorities and their hobbies and they maybe just moved on and matured in different aspects i still think it was a decent turnout and the good thing that i did like about it, as i'm going to play here in this video is that I think in general maybe it's a maybe it's a labyrinth thing maybe it's an innovations thing, but I do like the I, I do like the fact that for the most part the crowd is extremely diverse in terms of ages, um, which I think makes for a far better party. I think I've sat on here already and moaned and moaned about how annoying I felt the whole Bergen experience and Berlin was in general because it felt like it was just like a one type or two type of people that kind of attended those things and just being copied and pasted along the way and they were very kind of. Um, you know what would you call it up their own ask and hipstery and just kind of annoying to be around whereas i felt like the people that i bumped into and spoke to at lost in the moment uk was such a good vibe they legitimately made it an, a good event and that's also considering like i've said it wasn't as busy as it probably should have been um and essentially they kind of made up for all that kind of stuff do you know what i mean like it's like if most you put on a, a, a house party and not a lot of people turn up but the people that do turn up are super safe they legitimately they legitimately made the party even better than what it probably could have been if it was just left as it was um and i got i recorded a quick video here that i'm going to play that kind of shows you some of the things that were grinding whilst i was there to kind of give you an idea what it was about and uh, yeah But yeah, as you can tell from the video, so I'll take, take a quick pull there. It was a fairly, it was a, it was a really good crowd. I'm not going to say fairly good. It was a really, really good crowd. Like, I really had a good time. I really enjoyed it. Um, there's far more better videos, courtesy of the Innovision Lovers group. So if you're a fan of that kind of music, definitely recommend you check them out on Facebook. I'm really not engaged in it as much as I should be because I think the community on here is really, really splendid. But if you want to have a better idea of what the event was like i definitely recommend you check out the individuals um lovers group here on facebook they'll kind of give you a better idea of what the day kind of entailed and how people are vibing and whatnot and the good vibes that i had by all but in general like i said um having been a kind of long term supporter and fan of what labyrinth do and kind of supported and gone to a lot of their events i definitely have to say in terms of what they've done at tough manor and what they've done just in general in terms of production this 100 percent was one of the best ones definitely 100 was one of the best ones i had an incredible 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 time there and um, met some really fun people everyone was really on a good vibe it felt like oddly enough one of the most safest i felt like events too i felt like even all the lads were kind of on their best behavior as well i felt, I felt like i saw a lot more groups of girls there than i've ever done in a long time which kind of speaks to maybe people feeling safe and not feeling as if they're going to be creeped on a lot of the times i just for everyone was just really on a good time everyone was just really there to have you know to have a bit of a dance have a bit of a boogie get on a bit have some drinks and just chill out even the bar situation was a little bit sketchy in terms of the wait times or whatnot and the whole having to buy a drink and hold on to it and get a pound back that nonsense but overall i still liked it i saw that every single part of it i thought every single part of it was fucking brilliant brilliantly brilliantly done the only thing i'd have to say was the issue for me was the fact that they wouldn't release the the set sorry the the fucking um the set list or set whatever you call it how would you call it set list is a set list 
they wouldn't release who played, what time people were playing, right? And it's a general pet peeve of mine when it comes to UK clubs. For some reason, there's this culture around UK nightclubs where for the most part, when it comes to big events with big DJs, they tend not to put out the set list ahead of time, which is the complete opposite of what happens in, the, on, in Europe, right? In places like Berlin and other places too. I've seen it happen in Amsterdam. I've seen it happen in some clubs in Georgia and shit. I've seen it happen in Keelan clubs in Paris. They would always put out the set list of who's playing ahead of time. So even if it's like a day ahead or a couple of hours before the event, you have an idea of who's playing at what time because if you went to see a certain DJ you could come just when they're playing or you could also maybe say hey I'm going to watch this other person play who I don't know that's going to lead me into a person I do want to see but regardless you really bought your ticket and I feel like in London and the UK in general they have this idea that for some reason they, they, they have this weird kind of idea that if they put out the set list beforehand people will only turn up to hear the person that they want to hear and then I guess because most clubs in the UK or just in general anyway, can't really survive off the back of ticket sales alone, they have to make sure people are there early enough to drink a lot so they can make their money back as well. Do you know what I mean? So I think the reason why they don't put out the set list or whatnot beforehand is because they want to ensure people come as early as possible, drink as much as possible, so that they can also make the money back on the bar and also they've got the guaranteed money of the tickets. But if you put out a set list ahead of time, maybe you'll have people coming in later, which might mean you might miss out on four hours of bar money. Do you know what I mean? With people coming in and stuff, which I think is nonsense really because for an, a destination sort of like day festival like um, Lost in the Moment UK, which was outside of London, you had to travel to it unless you're from the local area. It doesn't make no sense because you like people have got it people people who are gonna come are gonna come you're not gonna get any last minute people buying tickets to on on a day to go out an hour and a half outside of london so just give us a set list and then to make it worse the set list was only available at location and it was available like what a five minute walk away from the main not five that's, a, that's not really dramatic a, a two minute walk away from the fucking main floor so you have to kind of go around the sort of field to go around the kind of back way area and they put it on this sort of like weird bl plastic clear glass sort of panel thing which is i guess meant to be some sort of like arty sort of contraption i don't know what it was but it was just kind of hard to read and you have to kind of everyone's kind of going around they're taking pictures of it and kind of passing it around and i thought that was a bit lame personally for me i would have much prefer just to put the set list out beforehand let people know how they can plan their day how they can maybe space out their drugs and their drinking so they couldn't peak too early do you know what i mean and move on with the next events but i kind of find that a little bit annoying but apart from that i was a big fan of everything it was nice to kind of bump into um or take pictures of Jimmy Jules and Trix actually when I was there. Um, Trix actually I bumped into randomly at Shoreditch when I went out for dinner. Um, I kind of spooked him I guess when I was crossing the street as I usually tend to do. I kind of don't realise how big I am to other people. Do you know what I mean? Or how maybe odd I may look to other people. So sometimes when I'm just like walking around I'll just see someone I'll shout out their name and they'll probably think oh my god he's going to come rob me or I don't know whatever he's going to bend me over. I don't know what they're kind of thinking. He, you know, Trix had the kind of scared shook face and kind of just scuttled away but i kind of brought it up when i did when i did see him at flipping in the vision sorry at the lost in the moment and he did have kind of have a laugh but i was like oh yeah i remember you sorry i was in my own world sort of thing but that was kind of fun to see and um just in general man i think I, actually i took a picture of jimmy jules when we were there one of the djs that was playing there and it's interesting to see because when we went to see jimmy jules play at fold um, this must have been a few years, a couple of years ago, right? For the, like an Innovision label night. It was really one of the best, best Innovision label nights or Innovision type events I've been to in a while. One of the best nights I've been to fold and also one of the best sets I've heard Dixon play. Dixon was loving it, playing for that crowd. He was really going for it. Like I think he kind of got some um, flashbacks or vibes or kind of looks. Yeah, some flashbacks of like his early years playing like Robert Johnson in Frankfurt, playing in fold because of how the layup is and how intimate and close everyone is to the kind of DJ booth. He was really enjoying it. But anyway, I remember Jimmy Jules playing a really early set during that early Indivision label night, like super early. He must have played like, I don't know, let's say like a 7 to fucking 9 p.m. set or something, right? Or he wasn't that well known. He saw the producer kind of thing, not in the kind of background. And no one really like, kind of knew who he was and the place was kind of empty. And I think he even made a comment when he kind of finished his set. It's like, oh, I saw you guys dancing, like me and my friend, you know, thanks for like hanging around and being the fan of the song. So he clearly, you know, you could tell, you know, in terms of him remembering what our faces looked like, it wasn't that packed. Roll on this time at Lost in a Moment UK, I go to, I see Jimmy Jules from afar, 
and I'm wanting to ask him to take a picture of him on my film camera and he legitimately must have got stopped like six times because we were standing just next to the gates where all the VIP guests were going into the poor cabins in their little green room. I swear on my life, this guy got stopped like six, seven times by random people to take pictures. It was so cool to see to see him to go, see to see him go from, you know, t saying thanks to me and my friend for dancing one time early on. He said during a graveyard shift to him now suddenly being stopped like seven times before he goes to the green room was fucking cool to see, and it was just kind of like you know a testament to kind of his artistry and how cool he, how great his music is. The recent album that he put out was fucking phenomenal, um, really really amazing kind of artist. So that was kind of cool to see kind of in real life. Um, but yeah, here's a video someone played here from the Indivision label, sorry from the Indivision Lovers Group of Man of the Tough playing. I actually haven't seen this video actually. We actually weren't in the front of it, we were standing in the back one, kind of hear what, what, what this kind of sounded like. Oh, and one thing also, the sound. The sound was incredibly good. Um, don't get me wrong, not as good as Primavera sound or whatnot, because, you know, that was kind of, for me, the benchmark of sort of like open air um, sound system, sound levels, right? When I went to Primavera sound over the first year, I was like, oh my God, it's incredible. Of course, I'm coming from a very low standard because you, most UK events that are open air, the sound is always terrible because for the most part, the local council sort of stipulate they have to put the sound at a certain level um, because of sound pollution issues and neighbours and complaining and whatnot. And just generally, maybe people are just not giving a fuck about going the extra mile when it comes to like sound systems and whatnot and just you know being okay with two powered monitors or whatnot but they really went hard with the sound the sound was great like you could hear it really clearly even if you're standing just outside the sort of like area where the event was you could hear it very clearly if you're standing just like the trees where the main stage was it was really really good sound like proper, proper good sound <laughs> But yeah, it was it was good. It was amazing, man. No, it was good. It was really, really good. Looking back at these videos now, I can bloody hell, man. What an incredible, incredible, incredible time. Um, big up everyone that attended if you were there. Let's put it. What's who's this? Oh. But yeah, big up everyone there that was attending. It was absolutely incredible night. Um, incredible day actually event altogether. Big up everyone at Labyrinth that put it together. We did that performed. I had a hell of a time. I enjoyed it. I had a blast. I probably ended up peaking too early. I was absolutely dying on the train home to London. But again, um, I think all well and good, all well and good.